I'm going to end with a particular favourite of creationists, the notorious Bombardier Beetle. This is a recent headline that appeared in the Daily Telegraph, Beetle that may explode the, I the ideas of Darwin. The Telegraph thing goes on to say, if evolution were right, it would have exploded. The paper asks whether it offers proof of a creator. The story about the Bombardier Beetle is given in one creationist tract that I'm now going to read. The Bombardier Beetle squirts a lethal mixture of hydroquinone and hydrogen peroxide into the face of its enemy. These two chemicals, when mixed together, literally explode in, in the face of the enemy. The chain of events that could have led to the evolution of such a complex, coordinated and subtle process is beyond biological explanation on a simple step-by-step -step process. The slightest alteration in the chemical balance would result immediately in a race of exploded beetles. <laughs> well now, this does sound like a bit of a challenge, a difficult case. I mustn't evade my responsibilities to take on difficult cases. Um, here we have some hydrogen peroxide and here's some hydroquinone. And this is what's going to explode violently when... Just right. <laughs> now anybody who wants to can leave the room. Right, we'll start with the hydrogen peroxide. So far, so good. Now, I better put it down, haven't I? <laughs> What's happened? It's not even warm. Bit of a damp squib. There is some truth in the story. By the way, of course, I knew nothing would happen. There was never any danger. <laughs> there is some truth in the story. Uh, in fact, the hydroquinone does nothing at all. We can put that on one side. The true story is that hydrogen peroxide on its own uh, does decompose to form uh, oxygen and water, but it needs a, a catalyst under normal conditions to, to do that. Um, this black powder here is a catalyst. It's not the catalyst that the Bombardier Beetle uses. The Bombardier Beetle does use a catalyst, and it does, in fact, squirt uh, this hot substance into the face of its enemy. But if you put a catalyst into a weak solution of hydrogen peroxide, then you're going to get a little bit of bubbling, and it's a little bit warm. That might have some effect on the predator. That might slightly de deter a predator, and uh, it would be... Um, not particularly dangerous to the beetle. Now we've got a smooth gradient, a bit more concentration of hydrogen peroxide, and that's distinctly warm. That would work more effectively against a predator. And by moving gradually up the slope, gradually increasing the concentration of hydrogen peroxide, we can end up with... So there is a smooth slope all the way up to the effective deterrent against a predator. <laughs> the myth that the Bombardier Beetle, or any other feature of the natural world that has yet been described, cannot be explained by slow, gradual evolution, is a myth that deserves to go up in smoke. Making a complicated organ in one fell swoop is equivalent to a miracle. It's equivalent to opening a bank safe combination lock in a single lucky spin of the dial. It cannot be done. In one way or another, this lecture has been variations on the 747 theme. You can't make complex, efficient working objects like eyes or wings in a single step. Any theory that says that life, or a part of life, an organ, an animal, complexity or perfection came into being in a single step, starting from nothing, has got to be wrong. Evolution is the one idea that has nothing to fear from the 747 argument, because evolution is the one idea that does not suggest 
that complex perfection came into being in a single step. It is the theory of miraculous creation that is really blown out of the water by the 747 argument. Because it is miraculous creation that is equivalent to cracking the safe in a single step. Equivalent to blowing together a 747 in a junkyard. Evolution escapes the taint of miracle, escapes the taint of impossibly long odds by the simple yet hugely effective trick of smearing out the luck, smearing it out over the vastness of geological time. In the next lecture, The Ultraviolet Garden, we shall be looking at the question of who benefits from evolution? Who is it good for? Thank you very much. And that question, who or what benefits from the activities of other living things, is answered tomorrow at 12.25.